There you go. Okay. So, um, if you guys need to graph this, you can always use your graphing calculator. And you can also always go and go back to a table of values, right? There's nothing wrong with it, everything else. However, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we practice using things with the transformations to help us out. So let's just go, when we're never doing transformations, there's a couple important things we need to make sure we understand. First of all, we need to know what the parent graph looks like, right? You can't transform something that you don't know what you're transforming from. So we first graph the parent graph. Okay. Now we look at our transformation and say, all right, what's happening? Right? We now have a equals 2, um, h equals 4, and k equals 2. Right? Remember, it's a opposite of h, so h equals 4. So what does that tell us? Well, a is going to tell us we're going to have a stretch. right? Or I'm sorry, a compression, or it's going to be stretched vertically, compressed horizontally. Um, either way, but we'll, look, we'll show you guys how to evaluate for that. Then the next thing, h is going to tell us we're going to shift right four, and k tells us we're going to shift up two. Now, here's the way I like to do it. You guys know we have asymptotes right now that are along the x-axis and along the y-axis, right? We know that's where they exist here. I'm sorry, I probably should have written here. So if I'm going to be shifting, Notice that my asymptotes intersect at the origin. If now, my, if now I'm taking this graph and I'm shifting it to the right four, that means this vertical asymptote is going to shift how far? Four over. So now I can say one, two, three, four. So now I'm going to have my vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals four. And, and then I have my k tells me I have to shift my graph up two. Okay, so you guys see how I can apply the transformation by using my asymptotes? All right. Now, you could just say, oh, well, let's just estimate in the right or like that. What I want you guys to do when you guys are doing a problem like this is let's just, to keep it simple, a lot of you guys are going to want to put your graphing calculator, plug it in there, and try to throw up a graph. That's fine. But just like when we did quadratics, you guys, I, wanna, I want you to evaluate at least two points on either side of our asymptote. For a quadratic, I told you to evaluate at least two points on either side of the axis of symmetry. For hyperbola, that's the exact same thing. I want you to evaluate at least two points to the left and to the right. All right? Asymptotes. So right now, we kind of know what the shape of the graph is, but we have a stretch of two. So I want to see how that's going to affect the graph. So I'm going to pick some kind of simple points. And usually, ladies and gentlemen, to help you out, it's usually best if you pick, just like for quadratic, you don't want to pick points that are really far away, right? For a quadratic, you want to keep them very simple, very close. So I'm going to pick these two points, and then I'll pick 5 and 6 over here. So let's go ahead and do f of 2. So f of 2 equals 2 divided by 2 minus 4 plus 2. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 equals? negative 1 plus 2, which equals 1. So at 2, I go up 1. Wait. 2 on the regular graph? Hmm? Well, Never mind. OK. Now let's do f of, f of 3. So now I do 2 over 3 minus 4 plus 2. 2 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. Wait a minute. Why did I shift up 3? What's wrong? Oh, OK. So therefore, that equals 0. So at negative 3, I'm at 0. OK? Now, understanding the shape of this graph, we know that the graph is going to go through these two points. And the important thing, guys, remember asymptotes. Asymptotes where a graph approaches. So we know these two points are going to now approach that asymptote. And they have to now approach this asymptote. Right? Yes? 
Yep, then I do 5. So I'll do f of 5, which equals 2 over 5 minus 4 plus 2, which equals 2 over 1 plus 2, which equals 4. So at 5, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. And then let's do f of 6. 2 over 6 minus 4 plus 2. So that becomes 2, 1. That becomes what? 3. So at 6, I get 3. And then again, you have these two points. We know they have to fall into this shape where they're going to approach both asymptotes. And there you go. I have now graphed it. Does that make sense? OK, but we're not done yet. Because now we need to still do going to determine, now we need to say, what are our new asymptotes and what are our domain and range? So we look at this and say, all right, our new asymptote is now at 1, 2, 3, 4. And our, our sorry, I'm sorry, our vertical asymptote is at, so our asymptotes, so our asymptotes, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4, right? It's written as a, as a um, equation for a line. And also, we have an asymptote at y equals 2. Now, let's determine the domain and range. So the domain, we don't have any restrictions except for one value we cannot plug into our function, which would be at? Zero. Well, what happens if we put in 0? If I put 0, 0 minus negative 4 is negative 4. 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 1 half. So yeah, we actually can evaluate for 0. What value can I not put in for x? Destin, what value can I not put in for x? No idea. OK, that's exactly why you need to be looking up here. Yes? What value? 4. Exactly, 4. If you put in a 4, then you get 0, which we know, right? So our domain is going to be all real numbers, except x cannot equal 4. OK? Now let's look at the range. The range, we don't have any restrictions on our range except for what value? Two. Two. So our range is going to be all real numbers, except y cannot equal 2. Do you sure you got that? OK. So all real numbers, you can just write it on. Yes. Do you guys make sense why I would want to move you away if you needed to? Because you guys need to be paying attention to this. You guys keep